That's that's all fine and good, Congressman, but why aren't you being louder about this? Why aren't I hearing anything from this committee? I had to just ask you about it, okay? We are... Just let me be clear. Viewers are sick and tired of hearings. They're sick and tired of letters. They're sick and tired of hearing complaints. They want action. Okay, Congressman, we're losing the country. During a recent interview with a Republican congressman, Fox propagandist Maria Bartiromo exploded into a furious rant at the GOP's inability to resolve any of its conspiracy theories and to protect Donald Trump from a potentially politically costly trial in Manhattan, and it was glorious. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, we've got a clip here. It's about two minutes long from one of the more recent episodes of uh, Maria Bartiromo's show on the Fox Propaganda Network. And, um, you know, we'll talk about this more after the clip, but Maria Bartiromo is fascinating because she believes all of the right wing conspiracy theories, which are, you know, leaving the Republican Party and being disseminated into the media. But she's not so far gone that she doesn't hold them accountable at their inability to resolve these fake manufactured crises and issues. And so it's fascinating to watch her grill a Republican congressman in real time and to know that he helped create the situation. He helped create the uncomfortable situation that he's now experiencing because he lied to Maria Bartiromo and her viewers. And now he's being held accountable for his inability to resolve these fake problems. Fascinating stuff. So we're going to play the clip and unpack it together in well, the United States. That's that's all fine and good, Congressman, but why aren't you being louder about this? Why aren't I hearing anything from this committee? I had to just ask you about it, okay? We are, just let me be clear. Viewers are sick and tired of hearings. They're sick and tired of letters. They're sick and tired of hearing complaints. They want action. President Trump is in a trial all day long, every day in New York City. Where is this committee of weaponization and what are you doing about it? I just spoke with Kevin Hassett, the former chairman of the White House Economics Council, and he said, Make no mistake, if we see President Trump go to jail because he violated this gag order, markets will react. Watch this. At the case in New York that the judge is being so, you know, undemocratic, unconstitutional in his rulings against President Trump, it really looks like there's a conspiracy to put him in, in jail, to put him behind bars. And if President Trump is in chains going to Rikers Island, then, like, would you want to buy a U.S. Treasury the next day? The thing that I'm really worried about, about short-term risk for the economy, is that the Democrats are serious in this lawfare. And if they actually succeed, then imagine, it's like we become a banana republic the moment they take him to Rikers. And I I just can't imagine what happens to Treasury markets that day. Okay, Congressman, we're losing the country. So with all due respect, I'm not blaming you specifically, but it's not enough to set up a committee that's called the weaponization of federal government. That's not doing it for anybody. We want to hear more from you. We want to hear action. We want to know what the heck is going on in this New York trial where nobody can seem to come up with a crime. Well, I'll tell you what I'm specifically doing. Of course, I serve on these committees. I don't chair them necessarily, but I serve on them. Happy to play whatever part because I agree with you. Uh, I've introduced and we have actually passed out of the Judiciary, the Judiciary Committee the No More Political Prosecutions Act, which would actually inhibit state prosecutors from being able to go after uh, presidents, former presidents like they are, it would remove uh, these venues in the state of New York, Atlanta, and elsewhere to a federal court should the president, uh, should the president decide to do it. Uh, it so there's so much packed into those two minutes, again, which is fascinating to me. Number one, Maria Bartiromo is pissed. She's not happy at all. She is frothing at the mouth, ranting at Russell Fry here, Republican member of the House Oversight Committee and the Select Subcommittee about the so-called weaponization of the federal government, basically the Twitter files subcommittee, right? This is the subcommittee that was formed to signal boost the uh, you know misfire that was the Twitter files and has continued on. Again, what, what's at play here is the idea that these Republicans have been spinning conspiracy theories that, oh, the federal government's been weaponized against Trump and MAGA and Republicans, and they have very little by way of proof. But they say it so many times to a sympathetic audience that there's a lot of buy-in. And then when they fail to deliver on any sort of actual evidence or consequence for the so-called weaponization of the federal government, then it potentially infuriates people like Maria Bartiromo because they're like, hey, listen, you've gassed me up. You've convinced me that there's a problem here. You haven't really proved it and you haven't done anything about it. And so she's finally unloading on the Republicans. It's so funny because this is a problem of their own making and hopefully we'll see more of it. The other thing is, 
this idea that the again the Department of Justice and the federal government have been weaponized. Um, again, there's no evidence of that whatsoever. Donald Trump has been prosecuted by the same sort of process that every other criminal defendant goes through. There are grand juries of Americans who are impaneled, presented with the evidence by prosecutors, and then they make the charging recommendations. It's happened in Georgia, a red state, New York, a blue state, Florida, a red state, and Washington, D.C., a blue district. So it's happened in like four different localities, right? It's the same process. Donald Trump is not, there's not some sort of shadowy cabal where Hillary Clinton and Merrick Garland and George Soros, because that's the other boogeyman for the right, where they are just snapping their fingers and prosecuting Trump. He's going through the same process. As a matter of fact, you could easily make the argument that Donald Trump is a beneficiary of the criminal justice system because in multiple court cases, he has been defying gag orders with impunity, defying the you know, orders and wishes of the judge with impunity and suffering no consequence for it, whereas everyone else would have been thrown in jail for contempt of court already. I digress. Now, I also want to point out the hilarity of what Maria Bartiromo's you know, trying to catastrophize here. Did you, did you know that if Donald Trump is jailed, there's a right wing economist who says that the economy is just going to crater. If Donald Trump is held accountable for his crimes, then the entire the world is just going to explode. And certainly the economy. There's no evidence of that. As a matter of fact, what's hilarious is Donald Trump right now and has been for months face has been facing four prosecutions. Again, one in Georgia, one in uh, New York, um, and then the two federal prosecutions. And the economy is phenomenal. Unemployment has been uh, under 4% for 27 months, which is a historic low. Um, real GDP growth has been phenomenal. The stock market has been phenomenal. Record breaking after record breaking after record breaking. It's gone so well that Donald Trump has been trying to take credit for it, even though he's not in the White House. He's not president. But he's saying, actually, the markets expect I will be president. So that's why the markets are up so much. But now they're saying also, the markets are on the precipice of disaster if Donald Trump is convicted. Well, he's been prosecuted all this time, and people seem to have more confidence in the market than ever. So really, there's actually no evidence to support your claim and plenty of evidence to suggest the contrary. But that's how desperate they are. They're trying to fear monger Fox viewers into being even more opposed to uh, a conviction for Donald Trump because they're trying to say, listen, if Donald Trump is convicted, your finances, your economic interests – will be injured. They offer no proof of that other than just cultish devotion. Last thing I want to point out is Maria Bartiromo does here <clears throat> something that a lot of right-wing people have been saying quite a bit, which is <clears throat> that uh, there's no crime, that there's no crime here. Why is there no crime in the Manhattan thing? Nobody can point what the crime is. I just want to remind you of what this, this primer is in the New York Times. What to know about the trial Donald Trump faces in Manhattan? Prosecutors accused Mr. Trump of falsifying business records to cover up a sex scandal. It's the first criminal trial of a former president. That's the crime. Mr. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in the first degree, all tied to the former president's role in a hush money payment to a porn star, Stormy Daniels. But that's, that payoff is not the only such deal prosecutors plan to highlight. The prosecutors from the Manhattan, Manhattan District Attorney's Office have accused Mr. Trump of orchestrating a broader scheme to influence the 2016 presidential election by directing allies to purchase damaging stories about him to keep them under wraps, okay? That's the crime. So when you hear right-wingers go, what's the crime? We don't know even what the crime is. No, the crime's been articulated. You just don't want to hear it. It's not been proven, right? So it's entirely possible that Donald Trump will be exonerated or, or found, you know, not guilty. The, the outcome isn't certain. But a crime has been alleged, multiple crimes. And if you say otherwise, you're a liar. And so Maria Bartiromo is, of course, a liar. And so are Byron York and other Jonathan Turley, all these other like right wing legal commentators. Of course, crimes have been alleged. Couldn't have a case without it. Have they been proven? Well, not in the court of law yet. So it's entirely possible Trump will be vindicated here. Seems unlikely. But anyway, I love it. I love the fact that she's so upset that Republicans have no one but themselves to blame. And hopefully we'll see more backlash from right wing media in coming months. Let me know what you think in the comments.